Welcome back to Quilt is Inspired. Here I want to show you a couple of the free motion background fillers I did in the book. I'm going to do a sample drawing so you can see what it really looks like, then take you over to the machine and stitch it. While I don't mark my quilts for background quilting, I do draw them out ahead of time just so I can get that muscle memory down, and I encourage you to do the same. The first background quilting motif design that I want to show you from the book is the uh, leaves on a vine motif. Um, that you can find on page 21. Um, you can see that I marked the vine lines but not the specific leaves because I want those to come out organic looking and not all the same. Um, if you're looking for more information on machine setup, then look to the very first video in the Volume 1 series where I talk about um, tension and, and some of the practice motif shapes that I designed in the book. Okay, so, but always when you, when you start quilting, you're going to lift up that bottom thread. And I just do that with a hand wheel. It just seems to be a little bit easier. So you have both of your threads up. Just pop the needle right back down in there. And then you can begin quilting. Now after you quilt for a little bit, you can just clip those both off. Just go real tiny at first. Needle down. So notice that I am taking the leaf shape sort of to the center. Um, between the lines, that's because I'm going to come back up this line and I want to put leaves on either side. Okay, but since we're starting on an, an outer curve, I'm just putting leaves on the one side. So I'm going to continue on. If you're wondering about these uh, little grippers I have, they are, for me, essential in moving my piece where my hands don't slip. Some people use gloves, they'll use little fingertip things, but I, I really like these because I don't like taking gloves on and off. That's just, that's just me. Okay, now in this one, <clears throat> we're going to make leaves um, on either side of that line. So we're just going to continue up and we're just going to alternate the different sides. Okay, so here I'm using a 40 weight rayon thread. It's pretty heavy. Um, in my bobbin, I'm using um, an, a little bit of a lighter 40 weight uh, poly. Um, and as I'm stitching, I'm happy with the stitch length, but I can see some of the bottom uh, thread coming up, which means that my top tension is maybe a little tighter than it needs to be. My, my tension right now is at 2.4. My normal tension is 4.6, so I am down quite a ways. I'm going to crank it down maybe to 2.0 um, and just see, <clears throat> excuse me, just see if that uh, helps me not see those little dots that are coming up. And there you go, there you have your background quilting motif that you can put applique on or just leave it as is. Okay, so now that we've gone through the um, leaves on the vine motif, I want to show you how to do little circles inside of a small space. So what I've got here is a quarter inch space. Um, I did this on page uh, 92 in the book and they're just little circles. Um, that you would do on a thinner thread. So anything a quarter of an inch smaller, I would not do 
uh, anything bigger than Aurafil 50. So if you notice what I'm doing, I'm making really a one and a half times around circle and going in opposite directions every time I hit a circle, almost like a like a double figure eight. And I do that. It just seems that the flow of the circles are a little better. Let's try to do it a different way. Let's see how they come out. okay too. Um, and there's the, it stops the flow a little bit when you have to stop and then change back in the direction. But if you are very directional and, and you can you feel better about drawing circles either to the right or to the left rather than both, then try that. You know. is right up against your quilting you're going to crit criticize everything that you do you're going to you're going to see every line it's just going to stick out like crazy but when you get the piece away from you and there's a lot going on truly it's it you'll feel much better about it so don't get so hung up on being completely perfect this is really all about just having fun and stitching your quilts yourself Okay, so I'm going to show you the meandering leaves vines that I did on page 73. This one's pretty easy. It's really organic, so there's no marking. Or We're just going to fill this little framed space with leaves, and I will uh, show you how to do that. And if anything comes to mind, I'll stop and talk, talk it through. If you just notice I'm traveling once I do a leaf and in an inner leaf shape I'm just traveling a little bit down the vine and then continuing on watch so that all of your sh your leaves don't f all face the same way you kind of want them you know even some going in towards the vine so just watch for that um, and then planning your corners of course you can always with this design it's really easy to get yourself out of a corner because you're starting at a stem put a leaf in the corner coming back down to the stem and then you can go in any direction you want. Make sure that you vary the size of your leaves that just adds depth and interest. Pretty haphazard little quilting design really didn't take that much thought. Um, yeah I might save that put that into a quilt block you just never know. The next quilting motif I want to show you is the one from page 73. Um, this is my abstract cabbage rose I designed when I was 
just on my iPad and drawing out quilting designs on Sketchbook Pro and um, it's a real simple design starts in the middle and I will show you how that goes Start with a little wobbly peanut shape in the middle, and we're going to do five petals. And then just note how I'm varying the different sizes. Some are short, some are long. Before I get to that fifth one, I'm going to go ahead and clip my threads. I know they're locked in there because I stitched a few tight stitches to start. Really, it's no big deal to cut the line in between the motifs, start your motif with a different thread, and then um, go ahead and start your third motif with a different thread. And I think what I'll do for the purposes of this demo is just illustrate then the different pebbles, um, working different size pebbles like I did on um, page 38. And that way we uh, will have this beautiful quilt block with, with uh, cabbage roses and pebbles. Um, the pebbles are more interesting if you go around the shape more than once and also it helps to smooth out the fact that maybe they're not perfectly round. But again, they're pebbles so they don't really have to be perfectly round. Um, this, will, this is a little bit easier than doing those, trying to get those perfectly round circles in a little quarter inch space as we saw a little bit ago. Um, this is a great way to practice your um, circular motion, moving your fabric under the machine in a circular motion. So. And by the way, I'm using a uh, 40 weight rayon Robus and Anton thread. I thought the sheen would kind of give it an interest to the mat that I uh, used for the flowers. So we shall see.
It's really hard to paint yourself into a corner when you're doing, I should say stitch yourself into a corner, when you're doing pebbles. Um, because you can go around the shape so many times and add teeny tiny little ones in between the little crevices um, that are formed by the by the circles. So it's a it's a really easy pattern to practice your free motion. I hope you I hope you enjoy it and um, do well with it. Once you have your new section quilted, you can add it to the main body of your quilt using one of the two techniques that I describe in detail in the Quilt is Inspired book, which is available through Amazon.com.